All right, you guys have come to know Go Wild as the best social platform to share and learn about gear, right? Everybody's tagging the, the gear they're using for their trophies, you know, best fish, best deer, whatever it is. Across all of this, you're logging gear so we can actually see what's popular. It's really cool. We started looking at all this and we said, man, we should really share this with people to show what other successful hunters and anglers are seeing. So we created the Hot 25. Today, I sit down with my buddy Jacob, who works here at Go Wild with me, and we brought some of our products in that we were kind of happy to see that made the top 25. It's always nice to know you're using quality products. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about some of the things maybe we want and don't have. And we're going to learn something maybe a little curious and kind of strange about Jacob. It's kind of concerning, guys. All right, let's get into the Hot 25. This is Go Wild's Hot 25 of hunting. Jacob, clearly everybody's going to be really influenced by us and what we have opinions of the Top 25. This they should all, be. They should be. This is the gear that we have, that we own, that, that we found in the top 25. So I feel like, you know, this is validated that we are really freaking good at hunting. Yeah, man. We're like the best. The best. The We're best. using what everyone else is. You know, the like most of the top 25 is already in our gearbox. Yep. We're very proficient. Mm -hmm. They I'm should run out terrible. and buy it all now. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't shot a deer in six years. <laughs> No, man, but um, it, this has been fun because we, you know, we did this and looked at all of the, the gear that's being logged in the app. And it's been cool because there's some products I'm like, I didn't even know that they made that product or that, you know, this was uh, an option. And that we, we're going to roll these out across hunting and fishing, cooking, camping. But today we are talking about hunting gear. And so Jacob and I are going to share a couple of our favorites here, just some stuff that we had and also push you to go check out this top 25 list to see what literally hundreds of thousands of people are, are using within our platform. You ready? Yeah, man, let's do it. All right, man. I'm going to, the cool thing, like Vortex kind of claimed two of the top 10 spots. Um, I'm a big fan of these Diamondbacks. I wear these things out. I have them with me almost any type of hunt. Um, they're perfect for like the range is perfect for where I hunt either in Southeastern Kentucky or here. It's got like just enough distance, but also I can still use them in fairly close for brushy scenarios. I use them for Turkey, for deer. And I'm also a big fan of my Vortex Ranger. Um, I've been, as I've been talking to guys about whitetail and gearbox talk too, this is, this is a product that a lot of them are using. Uh, I just talked to Cable Smith on Lone Star Outdoor Show. He's using this thing for pretty much anything. I do love my Vortex gear. I use that, uh, Ranger all the time, but the, the cool thing about the, have you shot one of these yet? I have not. Dude, they're cool. I, I played with one at ATA. So the great thing about it is you don't have to pick anything else up. Right. You've got it. Right. There's like the, the thing people misunderstand what this thing is. This is a bow sight and a range finder. It does not make you a better archer. Right. Like you're st if you suck, you still, still got to make the shot. Right. Right. You, at the end of the day, it's still on you. The cool thing about the, the so what happens with uh, a typical range finder is you got to come up, you have to adjust your single pin or, or if you're shooting a uh, multi pin, you still have to come up and there's a lot of movement. This limits it all to one. So um, again, big fan of all these products here. They all kind of have their, their, uh, place. I use this for the, the Ranger for rifle hunting for uh, my bow, but you know, the, the Garmin zero as what James Nash on my, on the gearbox talk with him, he's like, that's my favorite hunting product period right now. And I agree with him. It's, it's very innovative. Yep. It but, sounds like once you get them set up, it's set it, forget it. You never have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Like once you get them dialed in, the cool thing is that pin moves anything in between. It's on like a multi pin. You'll have your 20, your 30, whatever, however you have it set up, but there's gaps in between, right? This just eliminates the gap. It operates much more like a single pin site, but you don't have to dial it. Yep. Very cool. Uh, what, what do you got on, what, what caught your eye on the top? 25? Man, I'll tell you what. So I have been using a Savage Axis for a while, and the Savage Axis 2 made the list with the Accu Trigger, which the one thing that I miss on my gun that's actually my, on my brother-in-law's newer Axis is the Accu Trigger, and it is a crisp, very comfortable trigger. And so I love this gun. I don't think it's that heavy. Um, I don't have to worry about banging around because of the, the polymer uh, stock. And the accuracy on this thing out of the box is fantastic. So once once I got the scope dialed in, like it's it's on the money. Nice, nice. What's your other gun you got over there? Which one was that that made the list? So this is the classic. Um, I don't feel like you can really talk about shotguns without the Remington 870. So the the Remington 870 SPS Super Mag Turkey Gun is the one that made the list. Oh, okay. 
And so this is a, a basic Remington 870 that I use for all my turkey hunting. Conveniently with the turkey choke already yep. on there. Turkey chokes <laughs> on it. Uh, and actually still some turkey hunting dirt on here, oh, I noticed. Get this guy out of here. But, what, uh, what gun cleaning kit made this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's it's super, super simple to operate, super simple to break down, clean. And I have had zero issues with this gun. So I'm another believer in the, the Remington 870. And so, you know, I definitely think... If you have the ability to have multiple guns, one for birds, one for turkeys, that kind of thing, great. Um, but I'm really happy with it. Nice, nice. So you're more of a utilitarian on your shotgun. You got one for all. I'm the yep. same way. I'm the same way, man. That's how I use my Benelli. Um, all right, you and I both use these uh, cameras, and I wanted to talk about this because we had a couple cell cameras creep into the top list this year. Uh, the, the Spy Point Link Micro is uh, one that you and I have we've used, and the Moultrie uh, 7,000 I cel- cellular cam, uh, game camera made the number three spot. So it was a top five product. Uh, the spy points in the top 20, these things are game changers, man. For me, it's not as much about like creeping on the deer. People get the wrong idea about this. that don't hunt. They're like, man, you got your little security cameras out there. I'm like, well, no, what it is is I don't have to drive 30 minutes to my property or some people are, you know, hours and hours away. This has made my life a lot easier in, in being able to not have to go out there and you're not spooking deer. Um, you know, you, you get a pretty good, like pretty good assessment of what's going on with, with, without having to go out there and, you know, romp all over the place, drive your car out to where you're going. Um, if you get it really good in that first spot, if you can like scout and hang it in a good spot, it's like kind of like a one and done approach with these cell cams. Yeah. I like being able to keep track of the battery level too, because yeah. you don't have to go out there and feel this concern that your batteries have died and you didn't know it or you, you know you get out there and they're you're they're halfway and you haven't had yeah. the need to go out there yeah. so the, the one thing i it's taken me some getting used to to like find the right amount of volume to get on mine like if you send too many you're going to run your battery down faster so you like the the hunter in you is like oh i want all my photos right now instantly yep. instantly like yep. i want to know instantly but i set mine to several times a day because every time it uploads it's using the battery life pretty substantially so so figuring once you figure that out though you know there's a lot of great brands out there right now and i i think these literally will change people's approach to scouting you know right now i've got two other non-cell cameras that are leading into buck beds and i'm gonna have to go tromping in there to be able to you know to be able to get um get to myself my photos to be able to check it but I, i'm a big fan of the cell cameras in general and i think for me giving me so much more perspective on my stands yeah um all right man uh i also this is kind of funny i don't have this yet i just bought it though and i'm really pumped i bought it in the poma auction uh the morel yellow jacket supreme three field point bag archery target that is a long name but i just bought it uh and i'm pumped about it i i have a, i've like upgraded my from my generic big box store bag to um to a, an actual morale target you and i got to see these firsthand this year they're super nice yeah they are they've got some great products coming out they do what else you got on yours man i'll tell you what and so i know we both use this product um i'm a firm believer in dead down wind i spray it all over myself before i go out into the field uh, and their, their evolved field spray is a go-to. It, it honestly stays in my truck during hunting season. I never take it out cause I've forgotten it before and just been in the field, just wondering like how it's going to affect me. And this stuff, like, I don't know for certain that that deer can't smell me, <laughs> but I'm going to take every precaution that I possibly can to give myself success in the field. And, and this is a go-to every time I get out of the truck. Dude, there's some people, some people are like extremely opposed to scent control. They're like, no, it doesn't work. You don't need it. You play the wind. I get that. Some people are hardcore into like carbon material. They're into this, all the scent control products, the ozones, like all that. They go all in. For me, you need to just take a regimen that minimizes your scent. Right. You, you ever walk outside and you smell skunk and you're like, oh my God, I'm getting ready to get hit. Like yep. it's, when it hits you in the face, it alarms you, right? If you come outside, you can like faintly smell it and you know it's not nearby. You're like, oh, whatever. You'll, you'll keep walking, right? Yep. That's the same thing with whitetail. Like you, you want to minimize it so that if they do smell it, it's not going to do it. It's not going to deter them or at least have less likelihood to. It's impossible to wipe out your scent for a whitetail in my yep. opinion. I mean, there's a lot of products out there that do a great job of minimizing it, but you just want it to not be alarming. And I do agree. I use the dead down stuff and I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you if you expect to just spray yourself with this every 20 minutes and that's going to give you success, <laughs> like you're going in about it all wrong. So I you, actually just spray the deer right in the <laughs> nose. They can't smell anything after that. Knock it all down. Yeah, I put it in a water gun. 
you know, yeah. from the stand, <laughs> shooting them right in the face with it. <laughs> but so you know, it's like it's a combination, and it's just a tool in the arsenal of, of scent control. Another well, and speaking of scent, uh, <laughs> Tink sixty nine is like the go to gold standard for deer pee estrus, yep. uh, and the it made it in top five. And it's like, I, I have so many bottles of this stuff in my, I, I pulled it out, uh, prepping all my gear for this. And I had like a bag of, you know, <laughs> probably like every year's Tink 69. Cause you always go out and buy the fresh stuff. You want that fresh deer pee. Yep. Are you using this? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. It's a clear favorite. Yeah. So, and I'll, you know, it's for me, it's a trigger for thinking about the season when I, that smell, it's like, I, I hear it's deer season. That's something that comes to mind, just like a pine tree at yeah. Christmas. Like it is a, is synonymous with deer season. It is a little me. weird how excited I get when I smell deer. Pee. Yeah, dude. Like it's my, my wife, I walk in and she's like, you smell terrible. <laughs> get out of here. But, but truthfully, like I get pumped for fall when I smell my hunting clothes soaked yeah. in deer urine. I get called out for sniffing the bottle. She's like, you know what it smells like? Why are you doing that? Are you, it's like, I don't know. It's in, just a, he's it's in a Cabela's comforting like, smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, what else is on your list? Anything else that caught your eye? Yeah, you know, something that uh, that I use definitely during the rut is a grunt call. And so the, the Primo's Evolve or um, Revolver Deer Grunt Tube is a great tool because it'll do multiple sounds. And I have one that's similar to that, but it's it's more like a flute where you push down on the, the read in different spots. And I love being able to have one one call that does multiple sounds um, that I don't have to worry about, again, switching hands around. Uh, and so like that easy one finger turn to be able to change the yeah. sound is, is really easy to use. Yeah. I've got a call that sounds really good, but I kind of have to open it up. I got to fill it with the read and it's a lot yeah. of work. Um, I, I need to, I need to upgrade to this one. It sounds like, well, I used to have an archery call that was really small mm -hmm. and you would just kind of move it on your teeth to mm -hmm. change the sound. Um, but again, like you, you're, there's still extra movement. But being able to just move your thumb or your finger mm -hmm. is a lot easier. I'm just thinking of you doing that over the last six years while you're trying to find a deer. <laughs> like maybe they, maybe that's what it was. It was that teeth call that you got going on. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is that you can put that in the right spot, whereas the other stuff you have to have your teeth right. And if uh -huh. you're just a little bit off on that tone, like it doesn't sound like a deer at all. Yeah. I always like whenever I hit a bad call, I'm like, should I wait or try to convince them that the deer just <laughs> that had a another cough? one? <laughs> Like, like every now and then you run into somebody that's just got a funny voice. Yeah, Maybe that's congested this morning. <laughs> All right, man. What else you got on your list? You know, I'll tell you what, like there is, if there's one thing that I need to upgrade in my kit, um, for spring Turkey and fall deer hunting is boots. Mm. Like there's one thing I feel like people, especially myself, like I skimped just trying to save money because boots can get out of control. They can be expensive. I've tried the just plain old regular rubber boots. I've done the Thinsulate um, store brand boots yeah. and just haven't been happy with them. So two things that really caught my eye on this list were the, the lacrosse alpha burly and the muck wetland boots. Quality boots are the one thing you're going to figure out in the field that you blew it on. Yeah. And so like that is my upgrade that needs to happen soon. Yeah. I, um, I agree. Getting good boots. It ma and especially if you're, hunting up north late season whitetail you can get get good boots man like you yep. gotta have something warm um and then a lot of people are really big believer in, in the rubber boots which the mug boots obviously offer a great solution for that uh, anything else on your list man no that's it dude that is uh that covers everything that's that really caught my eye on there i've got one more all right let's see here <laughs> 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 all right i love my first light sanctuary bibs dude <laughs> They came out, they've been working with all these whitetail hunters on these things. And I, you know, any, any brand that comes out, it's like, uh, you, you, you worry about marketing ploys or whatever. Um, you and I've worked with first light in the past and I will say they put in good work. Like the fact that this is not a tradition, any other kind of clothing marketed as whitetail, this stuff is built for whitetail. It is super warm. In fact, it is so warm that if it is, I won't wear them. Uh, it, it has to get into like low thirties before I'll start thinking about it. I got a mile walk out to my stand. I don't want to get super hot, but what's nice is these actually have a vent in the rear that, uh, has, serves two purposes in the field, if you know what I'm saying. But for walking out, I will actually open that up because a lot of your heat gets stuck in your back and yep. in your butt and like, it actually keeps you really cool. 
and I honestly have not had to wear these with anything more than like a layer under here. I wear like some thermal, I have some cheap cotton thermals or I have some synthetics that I'll wear under here. Nothing super fancy. And I will literally, I, I wore these last year in 17 degrees and I was sweating yeah. and they're fantastic, dude. Uh, they're, they're worth the money too. I will say like I've had my share of um, cheap cotton bibs and they just don't hold up. Um, you know, and once they get wet, they're miserable. Uh, the, these have held up really well for me. I'm a big fan. So I had to, you know, show you in person what they look like in case you didn't know. Do you want to see the vent? If they're big enough, I get in with you, but I'll, you, I'll what, just wait. Do you want to see the vent? Yeah, man. <laughs> So I'll, I'll say this, like I see a lot of people in Go Wild talking about First Lights bibs and I have some buddies that have waited for the 20% off sale that they'll do. It's like, mm -hmm. that's the time they capitalize on it. They get a lot of great reviews and obviously there's reasons why. Yeah. I love it, man. I'm a big fan. Um, and it, you know, the, for sitting in, if you're in 30 degrees or below, I, I must have like poor circulation or something, dude. I, get, I wish I was like a tough guy and could sit it out in a t-shirt out in 20 degrees. I can't. I get cold. I love these things. I combine them with my uh, the puffy coat that I have from First Light and stay warm. I can sit out there all day. Not to mention they got plenty of pockets for snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> a trail mix. <laughs> all right, dude. Uh, check out if you are into fishing and hunt, uh, camping and cooking. We're going to do this all over again and talk about um, with, with various team members, too. We're going to bring in some people that fish a little more than I do on, on this next one. Uh, but check out the other the other shows that we're going to put out. Check out the full list. We're going to put that in the links. And uh, if you see anybody sniffing the, the tinks into Cabela's, uh, just run because it might be this guy. <laughs> <laughs> just don't pat them on the back while they're smelling it. Yeah, or, or it might be a good way to teach them a lesson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for doing this. All right, man. It's fun. Wait, I was supposed to check with Erica to see if she had anything else that we were supposed to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Erica, anything else? Erica?